Ashley, and good morning, everyone. Good morning. And a very warm welcome along to you as we gather today uh, to, to celebrate and to give thanks for uh, the harvest. And it's a, a little bit different of a, a harvest Thanksgiving season for us, isn't it, as we've reduced down to one service and with uh, less uh, decorating in the church as well, and yet we acknowledge that that which has been done looks so well, and we're thankful for that. We delight to gather together to praise, to worship the Lord our God, and to give thanks to him for his faithfulness to us throughout another year. And as we do, we are reminded of the wonderful promise of God to uh, Noah after the flood, where it says, and the Lord smelled a soothing aroma. Then the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake, although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done. While earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. We gather today to, to worship God uh, with that promise uh, in our ears, as it were, and with the assurance of God's goodness and God's faithfulness to us. And we pray that as we worship him together this morning, that we will sense his presence. and We will become, uh, in, in a wonderful way, just aware of his goodness and provision and uh, his blessings toward us and, and from the, the, the deep recesses of our hearts uh, we will offer him praise and thanksgiving. So let's take a moment to, to pray and commit our time to God in prayer. Let's pray. Our gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are the eternal God. We thank you that you are the creator God and we thank you that you are the faithful God and the Redeemer God. We gather here today acknowledging your faithfulness to us throughout another year. We gather to give thanks and praise to you for all your blessings and benefits, for all that we have enjoyed from your hand throughout another year. And we acknowledge, O oh God, that for us it has been a difficult year and continues to be difficult. Um, and yet we know that you have been with us. And you continue to be with us. And you will lead us day by day. But we worship you now. We give thanks and praise. That in spite of all that has happened. You are still in control. You still remain faithful to your promises and to your word. And we can trust and depend upon you. So we pray that you would help us to lift our eyes off our earthly circumstances and to fix them upon you and upon your son the Lord Jesus in these moments at least that we spend together for we know that when we look to you uh, you will minister to our hearts and lives so let us focus upon your beauty O oh God let us focus upon your righteousness upon your majesty upon your, your grace and upon your loving kindness measured out to us beyond measure, beyond our deserving. And so we thank you for every good and perfect gift that comes down to us from you. And we pray that you would help us not alone to, to focus our eyes upon you now, but to trust and depend upon you in all areas of our lives. We seek now your forgiveness, O oh God. We pray that you would have mercy on us for oftentimes we have forgotten or perhaps even refused to give you your due and to acknowledge that all that we have has come from your hands. At times we think that we have provided our own wealth and all the things that we have. And we forget that we would have nothing unless that you gave it to us. As the hymn writer says, O oh God, we could not even draw another breath 
unless you gave us the power to do so. So forgive us for all our sins, whatever they might be, and draw us close unto you and help us, Lord, to, to hate sin and to love you more and more and to be drawn closer to you day by day. We pray now that by your Spirit uh, you will enter into our, our worship and you will lead us in our thanksgiving and in all that we do this day. So minister to us and bless us, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. We turn to our opening praise then, and we remain seated for this hymn as we have been doing since the, the reopening of our churches. Let us with a gladsome mind praise the Lord, for he is kind. <laughs> And we thank God that we have that assurance that his mercies uh, will endure ever sure. Uh, we praise God for that. Let's turn now to uh, the Old Testament reading. We find it in uh, Psalm 103, uh, reading verses 1 through to 5. Psalm 103 and verses 1 to 5. Let us hear God's word. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. Finishing there at verse 5. The announcements have been rolling on the screens before the service began, but just to mention one or two things uh, at this point in, in the service. And um, in relation to the, the Samaritan's Purse shoebox uh, appeal, um, I encourage you to uh, bring your shoe boxes. We encourage you to fill the shoe boxes first of all, and uh, to bring them uh, for. Um, but by Sunday the eighth, to bring them along by Sunday the eighth of November. So a couple of more weeks, uh, and you can bring them and leave them in the the, the porch there on, on the way in uh, next Sunday and Sunday the eighth. Or if you don't manage to make that, or if it, if you know somebody perhaps who, who just doesn't feel. Uh, ready to come out to church again uh, in the present circumstances you could bring them then on Monday the 9th uh, between 9 o'clock and 10 o'clock uh, and, and leave them in the foyer of the church hall we make sure the church hall is opened and then that, later that day they will be taken on to the distribution centre so we encourage you at this time to, to fill uh, some shoe boxes for the Martin's Purse uh, Christmas shoe box appeal Again, if you haven't already picked up your harvest envelopes, they are available across in the church hall and the tables in the foyer. And uh, we would encourage you 
to, to get yours today if you haven't got it and you could bring it back over the following Sundays. We'd be happy enough to, to receive your envelopes over uh, the next couple of Sundays as well as today since we're only having the one service uh, this harvest uh, weekend. And then the other thing to mention is that we will have communion next Sunday. Uh, we plan to go ahead with the communion service. It will be done differently uh, and we will use uh, these little uh, cups or pods, whatever you call them. And there's a little small piece of bread sealed in the top and then there's another seal underneath where, where the wine is. So you, you, you have those and um, it should be safe and secure for you uh, to participate um, in the service. So just to bear that in mind also. And then I do want to say a big word of thank you to um, Jean Briars who volunteered to do the, 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 the arrangements uh, as she, she does arrangements every year for us and she did this arrangement and the one on the porch and Elsie Farr who's also provided uh, some things by way of decoration for us and the others who have provided this fruit and I have to be careful I don't knock these over but to, to everyone who was involved in any way in providing the fruit and vegetables and and putting it all in place to decorate our church. We know it's, it's well scaled back from normal years, but yet uh, what has been done has been done so well, and we appreciate that very much. So thank you to, to each one who's been involved. And that's, that's all really by way of announcement that I'm going to mention. And at this point I'm going to ask uh, Ashley if he, I think, are you going to sing this morning? Yes. So obviously we have no choir either singing a piece as we normally would today. So instead of just playing this piece at this point in the service, Ashley is going to sing for us, Oh God, you search me and you know me. Thank you, Ashley. We appreciate uh, that piece that you've just sung for us. Thank you. Now we're going to come to, to prayer again, and we're going to uh, bring our prayer of dedication, as we know that folks have been uh, bringing their offerings, uh, or their special harvest offering, uh, and their, 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 their weekly offering, and we, we give thanks again to God for that, and also to bring our prayers of intercession and uh, we want to pray very particularly today for those members and friends of our congregation who are uh, very ill with the coronavirus at the moment and we, we do want to remember them and their family circle uh, and commit them to God and pray for 
their healing again. So let's, let's pray together. Father, we do acknowledge your goodness to us day by day, week by week, and over this past year that you have granted to us. And we know that this year, 2020, because of the coronavirus particularly, has been a very difficult year for many of us. And for some in, 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 in business and, and so on, uh, it has been a very trying year. Uh, and yet you are here in the midst of it with us. And for all that we have received from your hand, we give you thanks and praise. And we, we thank you for what we are able to return over this uh, Harvest Thanksgiving this weekend. We thank you that uh, you will be pleased to receive it. We pray that you'll bless all that we give and all that we bring and all that we offer in your service by way of our money, our time, our talents as well. And so we, we pray, Lord, that you would bless it for your own glory and for the work and the good of our congregation. Lord, we want to commend our congregation to you in these difficult days. We remember all of the families connected with our congregation. We pray that you would draw near to minister to us. We think very particularly today of the, the families, uh, the family of um, of Albert, Albert Glasgow and, and his family circle. We pray that you would undertake for Albert as he is uh, in hospital quite ill at the moment. We pray that you would guide and bless and undertake for the medical team who are looking after his care. And we pray that they will be able to uh, alleviate uh, his, his symptoms, Lord, and his condition and that he may begin to make a recovery and we ask that you indeed O oh God would intervene directly as well to bring your healing touch upon Albert's body and so we commend him to you and his wife Norma that you will continue to recover her also and that you will be with her and with all the members of Albert's family as they are greatly worried and concerned for him. We think also of um, Trevor Turkington, also in hospital, very ill, and we, we pray the same for Trevor, that you will draw near, you will guide the medical people, and you will intervene to help him and undertake for him. And each member of our congregation who has been touched by this virus and their loved ones, we commit to you and in our wider community also. And we pray, Lord God, that uh, very soon we can see a, a turning of the tide again and that the, we see the infection rates dropping uh, and we see those who, who need hospital care, we see that trend dropping also. We, we pray that you will continue to help those who are seeking at a government level and at a, a medical and scientific level uh, to bring this under control. We pray that you would guide them and help them. We know they have such a difficult task. Uh, and, and yet, Lord, we pray that you would help us also as individuals and as members of our communities to be wise and to be sensible and to take every care that we can to uh, bring this under control. So, Lord, we, we believe it's, it's going to be with us for some time, but we pray that you would help us as we would seek to bring it all under control. And again, we commit each one to you who has been touched by it, who has been affected by it. We know it's not only in terms of of health and, and serious ill health that we've been mentioning, but also in terms of, of livelihoods and of incomes and of businesses that are under threat. And we commit this whole thing to you and pray that um, with the help that is able to be sought from government uh, and with hopefully bringing it under control, that many jobs can be spared and businesses also. 
So, O oh God, at a time when we're giving thanks to you for all your goodness to us, we are also crying out to you for your help in this period of great trouble for our nation and indeed our world. And we pray for others too, Lord God, who are contending with other health issues and with other uh, non-health related issues uh, in, in their lives, that you might draw near to each one and bless and help and encourage us. So Lord, we, we, we commit ourselves to you again today. We pray your blessing upon this congregation at this time and in the days ahead. We pray that we will remain thankful to you for all of your goodness and we will more and more trust you in our times of trouble and difficulty, that we might know your hand at work and we might see you even glorifying your name in the midst of all that is going on and that you will yet give us cause to praise you more and more. These things we pray now through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 9 for the New Testament reading. And we're going to begin at verse uh, 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and at verse uh, 6. Let us again hear God's word as Paul speaks to the church at Corinth. But this I say, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and he who sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. So let each one give as he purposes in his heart, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always having all sufficiency in all things may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he has dispersed abroad, he has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. Now may he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food supply and multiply the seed you have sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness while you are enriched in everything for all liberality which causes thanksgiving through us to God. Amen. Finishing at verse 11, we thank God for his word and we pray that he will bless his word to all our hearts today. Well, it is that time of year again uh, when we have come to that season of the year uh, when the harvest has essentially been gathered in and we take this opportunity to say thank you uh, to God. And as we do, we turn to Psalm 103 that we read from just earlier and we will use it as a kind of a, a launch pad to look at a couple of other passages as well uh, that encourage us and teach us really and tell us why we should uh, give thanks in Psalm 103, uh, we see David's great song of thanksgiving uh, there, which we, we have read part of it already. David invites himself really here. He encourages himself to praise God. And his praise is focused on uh, God's glorious deeds. Verse 2 says, Bless the Lord, o my, o my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And so he encourages himself to give thanks for daily blessings. He reminds himself in this psalm of the many benefits that God has given him. And it's good to do that. And it's good too uh, that, that we should remind ourselves. And that's in a sense what we do over the harvest Thanksgiving season. Which for us is, is limited to, to one service of worship this year. It's good that we too should remind ourselves of God's goodness, of his blessings, and of his benefits to us. Now, as I've already said in, in our service today, for, for the greater part 
of 2020. We have been impacted by, by COVID-19. Our lives have been affected by that to varying uh, degrees. Life this year has not been normal for us. It's not been the kind of year that uh, we, we expected or that we normally would have. Our freedom has been curtailed. Um, our, our work life has been impacted. Our, our family life has been affected and our church life too. Education has paid a, a price uh, and so has our health service. It has certainly borne the brunt of this COVID-19 virus and we see that uh, at work all around us at, at the minute in terms of, of the health and well-being of people and in terms of uh, people's jobs and livelihoods being impacted and affected. And that's something that we probably will see more of in the coming weeks and, and months. So this has been a different year, a difficult year. Um, I wonder, for many of us, I would suggest... That uh, there has never been a period in our lifetime when there was such uncertainty around life and when there has been so much fear and so much of an economic and a health crisis. Of course, there will be some in our congregations who can remember back to world wars and, and that kind of crisis, of course. But for many of us, we have never lived through a period like this period that we're living through just now and we might ask the question well what is there to be thankful for what is there to be thankful for what should we for what should we be thankful well i think we should be thankful that god keeps his promises and that wonderful promise that we had as our call to worship uh, we, we see there that seed time and harvest certainly still has come uh, this year uh, and that is something to be thankful for. But the first point I want to, to, to make really is this. That we should be thankful for the essentials in life. We should be thankful for the essentials in life. Let me read, as I say, we'll touch on some other passages. But let me read uh, from First Timothy chapter 6, just a couple of verses, beginning at verse 6. Now godliness with contentment is great gain, for we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. And it's that last verse I want to focus on here where Paul says, and having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. We take these things so much for granted normally, don't we? But having food on our table should make us thankful unto God. And in spite of all that we have been contending with, and I've I kind of summarized that already in the opening there, the, the impact of the COVID-19 on us, but in spite of all that we have been contending with, God has kept his promise of old. That while earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and day and night shall not cease. And that is true. And even this year, that is true. It has been, uh, for, for the farmers, it has been a good grass growing year. For around these parts, I think, it's, it's, it's mainly a, a grass based farming as opposed to cereal crop growing or that kind of thing. But, but even so, it has also been a good year, a good autumn season for harvesting crops as well. The farmers have a lot to be thankful for. They have good reason to be thankful. And so have we, even if we're not farmers, for God has continued to provide for us. And because God has blessed us with the harvest, we have food on the table. And the supermarket shelves are still stocked with plenty of food. And I know there have been some points because of the corona uh, virus uh, that there have been some panic buying and maybe some things were not available in the shops that, that we, we would normally have looked for. But still, none of us have really gone short. And we have still had plenty. We have still had food on our table throughout all of this. And we should be so grateful and thankful for that because we're 
surely aware that millions of people around the world go hungry on a daily basis. And some are, are at, at times simply starving to death. And all of this while there is enough food around to feed everyone in the world if it was only distributed uh, properly, if you like. And so while millions of people go hungry, we have still had food on our table. And having enough to eat is surely a very good reason for us to be thankful to Almighty God. Having food and clothing, Paul says, with these we shall be content. And, and indeed, therefore, having adequate clothing also should make us thankful, and we have that as well. And we're approaching into the winter season now, at the time of year when many uh, people are cold and lacking in protection from the elements. Some people uh, are perhaps even homeless. Uh, some people are in poverty such that they cannot properly heat their homes. Uh, and in parts of other parts of, of the world, there are many uh, who are perhaps displaced in refugee camps and so on and so forth, where, where they don't have that adequate protection from the elements, especially in the winter months. And we are truly among the privileged who are comfortably clothed. Many of us have a, a variety of coats and jackets and so on that we can put on. We, we have a choice that we can pick and choose among. And so let us be thankful for all that God has provided us with, for all that we have in life. These are just a couple of es examples of essentials that, that we take for granted, folks, really, don't we if, we, if we're honest about it. Of course, some of us may have got by throughout the year on less than others. But few of us have ever really gone hungry, have we? Or, or lacked for some other essential in life. And so we should be thankful for the essentials in life, as Paul says to us here. And having food and clothing, with these we shall be content. And so let us, this harvest Thanksgiving season, Focus on what we have instead of on what we want. And may God help us to be thankful for all that we do have that he has provided for us. The second thing I, I want to think about is that not only should we be thankful for the essentials of life, but we should be thankful for everything in life. We should be thankful for everything in life. If I can turn back now to to Thessalonians, uh, this time uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 18. Well, beginning at verse 16, Paul says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, and then in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Paul encourages here to give thanks in everything, in every situation in life, in every circumstance in which we find ourselves, Paul urges us to give thanks. And we know what he, that he says in Romans 8 and 28, that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. And so even now in the midst of this uh, coronavirus situation that we're, in, uh, that we're finding so difficult to contend with, we can give thanks. Now, I know that that can be very hard to see. It can be hard to see how everything is working together for good in the midst of, of, of this pandemic, as it's called. When you're in the midst of the storms of life, it's hard sometimes to see something to give thanks for. It's hard to be able to give thanks when your back is against the wall, when your loved one is extremely ill as some of our loved ones throughout the congregation are at the moment. Or when you're dealing with some other uh, tragic event or difficult and troublesome event in life, it can be very difficult to see where is there an opportunity for thanks in the midst of all of this. But it is true nonetheless that we should seek to be thankful in every situation. 
We should be thankful, for example, that our loving Father has the whole world in his hands. We can't see the whole picture as he does. It's a bit like looking at, at the um, ornate quilt that's, that's being um, embroidered. And if you're looking on the underside of it, all you see is a mass of tangled threads of different colours. And it is just a mess. But oh, when it's turned around and you see the beauty uh, of the other side that has been embroidered there, that's a different story, isn't it? And it's a bit like we can just see in life that underside of that quilt with the tangled mass. But God sees the other side. He has the whole picture. He knows exactly what is happening. He has everything under control. And, and we should be thankful to God for all that he gives us. We should be thankful for our weather that we enjoy, whatever it might be. And obviously the weather doesn't always please us. Sometimes it rains too much when we don't want it. Uh, sometimes it's, it's cold and, and sleety and there's snow and ice in the roads when we're trying to travel and so on. Uh, but certainly we don't get the extremes of weather that some parts of the world do. And we should be thankful for that. And I remember my minister at home one time saying something along the lines, I was only small at the time, but I can kind of remember this, that he said something along the lines that we shouldn't really pray uh, for uh, rain or sunshine or something like that. We shouldn't pray specifically for the weather that we want because that might be adversely affecting our neighbour down the road who, who may be wanting something different than we do. Um, and the weather doesn't always please us, but we should be thankful for the weather that we enjoy and that God does provide for us and that, you know, he does give uh, all that he, he promises to us there in Genesis chapter 8. Seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night. He gives it year after year after year. Uh, and we should thank him for that. We should be thankful too for the promises of God that he gives to us that meet us in the storms of life. Wonderful, wonderful promises. The Bible is full of God's wonderful promises that help us, that encourage us, that bring strength to us when we are, are weak and when we feel down. Listen, for example, to Isaiah 41 and verse 10, where it says, Do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. We thank God for such a wonderful promise at a time like this, when so many of our folks are perplexed and feeling that they're in trouble and in need of help and enabling. So many other promises throughout the scriptures. Jesus promises us that promises us that we take his yoke upon us, that it's it's a light yoke compared to the work of the, the yoke of the world, and that he will give us his rest, his peace. First John chapter one and verse nine assures us that if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we, we can be thankful to God for his promises that really help us and strengthen us day by day. And we can be thankful, surely, if we know the one who holds the future. You can rest in his care, can't you? In spite of those storms that are swirling all around us, we can be thankful that our God holds the future and we can rest in his care. We, we should be thankful too that there is a design in our difficulties. And once again, uh, we often do not see this and it's hard for us to comprehend. But if we know that, if we know that there is a design in our difficulties, well, that will help us in itself even to deal with the difficulties that come. And we can know that God is working out some purpose in those difficulties. 
For example, Paul tells us in, in Romans 5 and verse 3 really that trouble teaches us patient trust in the Lord. Trouble at times helps us to cast ourselves upon the Lord when we can't help ourselves any longer. We turn to God and God teaches us patience. This is what it says, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. That's an amazing thing to say, isn't it? That we would glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance or, or endurance. God can use the difficult things in life to teach us and to train us and to lead us in the way that he wants to go and to help us to trust him more and so that he can help us. Problems, large and small, and in a sense they don't come, they don't get much larger than this COVID-19 pandemic. But whether they're large or small, they are intended even to make us more like Jesus. That's another part of God's design in them. Romans, um, Romans 8 and verse, 9, verse 29 says this, For whom he foreknew, he also predestined, for what purpose? To be conformed to the likeness of his Son. God has purposed that certain things would come our way that would help us to become more like Jesus. And is that not the desire of all our hearts? That we would become more like Jesus? That we would day by day be drawn closer to him, into deeper fellowship with him. And that as he would work in our lives and mold us by whatever means, that we would become more and more like him. And there's another thing that we should be thankful for. It's one that we probably don't imagine or don't think about so much sometimes, but be thankful for trouble that has not come our way. Be thankful for the trouble that has not come our way. Oh, if only we knew it. And there's no way that we can know it, but, but God spares us many heartaches in life of which we are unaware. There are many, many times when God steers us out of trouble and steers us away from heartache and problems uh, and, and we're not even aware of it. And so not only being thankful for all the things that God gives us, but for the things that he prevents from coming our way as well. He delivers us. Psalm 103 that we read from earlier in verse 4 says, He delivers us from destruction. It's not wonderful to know. There are times when our lives were under threat, when we were in danger of destruction, and God has delivered us from, we're not even aware of when those occasions were. Sometimes we, we may be aware that we have been spared some trial or difficulty, but often we're not even aware of that, and we should be thankful to God for those things. So we, let's be thankful to God for the essentials of life. Let's be thankful to God for everything Paul says. And then the third thing is this, we should be thankful for eternal life. And we come then to that passage we read from the New Testament, 2 Corinthians 9 and in verse 15, which says, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. God's grace is something that should make us thankful. Not just God's common grace, which he bestows on everybody in giving us the sunshine and the rain, the heat and the light, the seed time and the harvest and so on, but also his special grace to save his elect from their sins. And we know that we are all sinners. We don't like to think about that, but the Bible tells us that. We are all sinners who do not deserve God's salvation. And we see that in Romans chapter 3, verses 10 through to 23. And finishing at verse 23, which tells us we have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so that we know that we deserve death and eternal separation from God. Now, you might be asking, why do I say we deserve this? Because deep down, none of us really thinks that we deserve that. Sure, we don't. 
we, we like to think that we deserve something good because we like to think that we've, we're pretty good people. But I say that this on the basis of what the Bible teaches us. Uh, we deserve it because we have earned it. And how can I say that? Well, um, you go out and you do a, a week's work and at the end of that you get paid. You get your wages. Your wages are something you receive uh, for something that you have done, the labour that you have expended. You wouldn't really go and work for someone and expect not to get paid. You expect to get your wages when you have worked throughout that week. And you would say, if your boss didn't give you your wages, you would say, well, look, I have earned these wages. I have worked for you all week. I deserve them. And it's not what it says in Romans 6 and, and verse 23. The wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death. So they are something, it is something that we have earned. It is something that we deserve, just like our pay packet at the end of the week. But we thank God that it doesn't stop. Verse 23 of chapter 6 in Romans doesn't stop there, but it goes on to say, but the gift of God. The gift of God's grace is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. And that is something that we ought to be really thankful for. And, and, and this means, therefore, that we who were without hope have been assured that we will never perish. John 3 and 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. So we should be thankful to God that he has offered us everlasting life in his Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Without Christ, there is no hope. Trusting in Christ, we have a sure and certain hope of eternal life and assurance of eternal life should make us thankful every day. And so we see that we have so much to be thankful for in spite of coronavirus and all the frustrations and hardships that it has brought and in spite indeed of any crisis that may overtake us in life. We still have so much to be thankful to God for. We ought to be thankful for the essentials of life, for God's common grace to us all in seed time and harvest, food and clothing, warmth and shelter and so on. We ought to be thankful not only for those essentials but for everything in life even the difficult things like a bad harvest or, or a bad year in business the loss of our job or a health problem or even this coronavirus pandemic because God works out his purposes in all these things and seeks to use them to teach us and to make us more like Jesus and we ought to be thankful that this life with all its problems and hardships and setbacks is not all that there is. But that God provides life beyond this physical earthly life. That God provides eternal life for all who will believe on Jesus Christ his Son. So let's trust in him. Let's be thankful for the essentials in life. Let's be thankful for everything that God brings our way in life. And let's be thankful especially for eternal life that God makes available to us. You know, Christians will ever be thankful in heaven. We will spend our days being thankful, praising and worshipping God. Look, look at what it says just as I close in uh, Revelation chapter 7, verses 11 and 12. All the angels stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom, thanksgiving and honour and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. We will, we will offer these praises and thanksgivings to God for all eternity in heaven and it has been suggested I think 
I think rightly so, that we should start rehearsing heaven's song here and now in this life and giving praise and thanks unto God daily for all his goodness to us. Indeed, I would suggest as I, as I, as I finish that a thankful heart here and now will make earth with all its problems more bearable, a little bit more heavenly even. So let's pray. Father in heaven, we do thank you for all your goodness, blessings and benefits to us. We thank you that seed time and harvest has come again. We thank you for your faithfulness to us since last we celebrated Harvest Thanksgiving a year ago. Help us, O oh God, day by day to be thankful for the essentials of life that we have and so often take for granted. Help us to be thankful, O God, for everything in life because you are able to work these things for our good and to make us more like Jesus. And thank you for the fact that we can have eternal life, a life beyond this earthly life of trouble where there's no more pain or suffering or tears or trouble of any sort. But only we will look in your beautiful face and give thanks and praise and honour unto you. Lead us, Lord, in that direction. Day by day, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to stand together now to sing our closing hymn. And indeed, uh, somebody has said to me that we'll not maybe know this, but hopefully, hopefully we will be able to sing these uh, verses of uh, Lord of the harvest once again we thank you for the ripened grain <laughs> May this bounteous God, through all your life, be near you with ever joyful hearts and blessed peace to cheer you and keep you in his grace and guide you when perplexed and free you from all ills in this world and the next. Through Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>